Hey guys, Pat here. So uh, we're back to my uh, 20 favorite films of all time list. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm just kind of feeling it out as I go along with, with each one. So um, it's a little weird. But uh, we're, we're here at number 19. This was a tough call because this is a film that could have easily been in the top five as much as it's in the top 20. And it could easily be the number one film. If I was in a certain mood a certain way, or, or if it was that kind of day, if, if it hit me the right way. Because um, this film's wonderful. It, it's, it's, it's quite frankly a gem. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it, I've seen it, uh, first time I saw it um, was, at a, was at a college uh, screening in a chapel. Uh, and that was, that was actually really cool. Um, and that is uh, uh, Giuseppe uh, Tornatore, uh, let's see, Tornatore's, I think it's Tornatore. Um, Giuseppe Tornatore's uh, Cinema Paradiso. Um, I haven't said the director's name in a long time. Um, I've seen this movie probably five, six, seven, t t at least five times, you know. Um, I've only watched the, d the longer version once that's like two and a half hours. Um, if you don't know what this film was about, it's this little kid growing up in Italy um, way back in the day. Uh, geez, I don't know. God, when does it take place? It's probably, it's probably in the 80s is when it starts. I assume it probably starts in the 80s and, and goes back like 30 40 years but it starts with a with a guy uh, uh, Salvatore and he's older and he's in bed and he's staying up and then the movie jumps back to when he was a kid and he lives in the small town where everyone gets together in the, the square of the town the town square and they go see movies every week they see movies and the priest every uh, week the priest he comes in he has to ring a bell to get to get uh, scenes taken out with kissing or sexual content and stuff like that, even if it's implied. And that's kind of a gag through the movie that has a payoff. Um, so Salvatore, he, his father's gone. He's just with his mother and his family, and he loves the movies. He goes there all the time. So the movie invokes that feeling when you're a kid or, or maybe even something that I've never even experienced because it's kind of lost in a sense. Is when people used to go to the movies, that's where their hopes and dreams and life and, 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 and the fantasies got lived out. Movies really were truly a, a life-changing experience in the past because, you know, there was just a lot less things to do. You get on your computer now and it's so, you can do so much. And back then you really couldn't. And that's what Cinema Paradiso is about. That's what the, it's really about. It's about a time that's lost something in movies that is lost so it's about the love of movies but it's it's a sad bittersweet story the whole time there's several stories going on in the film though there's a romance plot line um with salvatore and this girl throughout the years because the story goes through childhood teenage years and adulthood um it's got the tone of kind of like a miyazaki film i'd say or um old french new wave films you know uh maybe um uh, jules and jim something like that uh i i it's kind of hard to explain it it's really a it's a wonderfully unique film. If you saw Scorsese's Hugo, a little similar. Um, another plot line is his, just his life, his drama, this family, this town, all these characters. <laughs> there's so many characters. It's, there's slapstick. There's it's, it's every kind of stereotype a movie would have, big, huge characters. It's very Fellini, uh, you know, eight and a half type stuff, That if, if you've ever seen that movie. But... So then the movie um, has another plot line, and this is, the, to me, the best one. It's uh, his relationship with the projectionist at the local theater, Alfredo, who becomes like his new father throughout the years. So this, this wonderful movie is... Uh, I won't lie, I've, I, I can't watch it without crying. It's, it's, if you love movies and you love art and it gives your life meaning in this way that a lot of other things don't, this movie really connects with you because everyone in it is in love with movies in a sense and they get meaning from it. And it's a movie about movies told in the language of movies made for people who love movies. It's a film that just jumps around. They don't even have, you know, he'll, he'll have just this scene that's supposed to be sappy and romantic like a classic Hollywood movie. And it works in the context of the film. There's a meta aspect to it. But the message is always clear. It's always a, 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 a moment that is gone something you can't get back every second you know you're moving on to another place this guy's looking back on his life and you know he's thinking did i make the right decisions did i make the wrong decisions and you don't really know and it's complicated and messy and that's reflected in the films and the people and this town and these relationships so you get a great hollywood love story you get a great coming of age story and then you get this terrific um midlife crisis movie right and all these elements come together 
and I just ugh, it's two hours it, it's got terrific dialogue it's got the best score of all time in my maybe not the best score of all time one of the best scores but my favorite uh, uh, Morricone did the score to this if you don't know he did the dollars trilogy stuff like that the score to cinema paradiso is it's just beyond words it really is it's absolute uh majestic uh just wonderful there there's something so it, it should be way more icon i mean it is famous but wow it's just like some people i know have never heard the score and if you haven't heard the score you're going to be blown away and how it's worked how it's used in the movie and the context it gives visually see this is a filmmaker who's doing everything right from a technical standpoint with technique he's knowing what he knows what to do with the cinematography and the camera he knows what to do with the editing he knows what to do with the music the actors he has complete control he's completely in control of his craft in this movie master craft but he lets it feel organic and natural and real and lets it play out and be kind of messy and sloppy like the characters and like life and, and comes off like half remembered ideas of things or memories or or kind of like huh do i remember that scene from that movie and the ending which i won't spoil it's the best part of the movie, pretty much, and it's the satisfying final little end note that summarizes everything in the movie, and all the emotions come together of everything you're thinking. You're like, oh, shit. Wow. It, I can't... Oh, God, the ending of this movie. It is just... It's that thing. It's that thing where the director clearly had an idea for what his movie was, and he freaking nails it at the final moment. You're like, wow, you knew exactly what this was. And it's so satisfying, because you want the movie to have that payoff, because it's borderline going to fall into sentimentality or, or just be too melodramatic. It, it almost falls into, like, you know, that Spielberg thing with E.T. and stuff. It's like, is he going to get too sappy here? And then he pulls it back in and keeps it grounded. You're worried with Cinema Paradiso. So you think it's going to get too... And then he brings it totally back around and kicks, you, kicks your ass. Um, besides a wonderful score, photography, acting, I, I mean, terrific. The guy who plays Alfredo in this... Um, I think it's a uh, Philip Noretti or Noret. Uh, I can't remember his name. Um, he's a he's an older actor. He's he's great in this. Uh, it's got the the best kiss scene I've ever seen in a movie. It gets me every time. It's got oh man, it's just got so many. It's just basically one great scene after another. It's a movie that's a collection of scenes. I won't lie that the transitions and the editing from scene to scene necessarily it isn't like perfectly put together flow. But man, it's just like a bunch of scenes that are together are amazing. And each scene works as its own little mini film, its own little story. And there's so many stories going on. And then how they all kind of come together is what really makes it all work. Like, I'm okay with the film having flaws if you pull it all together thematically, and that's what he does here. Um, it feels personal. It feels real. Um, it feels like a, this happened. You can believe almost everything in this movie. It's ridiculous how real it feels. Um, it's, it's, God, it's tragic. It's got scenes where you're walking around and you're seeing collapsed buildings and a collapsed time. And uh, maybe maybe something that's maybe something that's gone that we'll never get back. It's 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 really a tragic film. It's really a sad film and a painful one to watch a lot. But it's so I don't know. Being sad is also uh, reminds you how to be happy. So the sadness just reinforces the happy feelings the movie gives you, and that reinforces your love for movies. And you realize that it wasn't a waste of time. It wasn't just bullshit. People just didn't tell you, oh, you went to those movies all the time. It wasn't gonna. Be? It did mean something. This guy becomes a director because he went to these movies he knows the language of film and uh the director translates it translates it as well as as has ever been translated through all sorts of movies very vividly and clearly in a simplistic way to an audience why people love movies in the same way like tim burton's ed wood does it he tells you this is why i love movies this is why movies are great this is what it takes to make a movie um, and this is how it affects people and what it leads to and how art creates art and art's a reflection of art and it always comes back around and it, it's so it's so many things and it's 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 layered but in not a not in a pretentious artsy way it's layered in just a clear classic traditional film way uh, just just the way you want a classic Hollywood movie done in Italy it revived Italian cinema it won the Academy Award for best foreign language film it had a, a director's cut that came out later and the film got a lot of attention again um, it's considered a, a modern classic um, I th I think it's just it's beautiful and I highly recommend it I, I, I would love to go into spoilers with it more but I don't want to ruin it for people who haven't seen it cinema Paradiso is is like American Graffiti, the 20th film on my list, very much about nostalgia. So th th there there might be a hint of a pattern here, but I, I promise we're getting out of nostalgia s soon. But I do like those messages. But this one, 
gets the get the gets the grade above American Graffiti because American Graffiti is about the early 60s and a different time that I didn't live in and these kids in their era and their music and their cars uh, even though I'm not in the era of Cinema Paradiso the film elements I can relate to and my life and uh, and that part always gets to me and I think there's something in this movie for everyone um, and I think there's this is a great film to watch with your girlfriend or your wife I think it's a very romantic movie um, I think it's one of those romantic movies that guys can like too um, it's a very funny movie. Very funny. It's absurd at some points, but it's hilarious. All kinds of comedy. And uh, it's a very emotional movie and a poignant film with pathos. And uh, it uh, it means something. It means something. It's an important film in cinema history because it was it was in that meta time of the 90s where films like Pulp Fiction started to come out and, um, you know, scream and stuff. There's something, this early meta idea here of, of looking back at, at, at the dead time of cinema and not in that uh you know let's go back to that era entirely and, and follow a director let's follow the people who are watching the movies you know eight and a half is about a director let's follow the people who go watch the movies and, and the, the human beings that experience that and uh it reminds me a lot of woody allen's radio days um and i'm just a fan of those kind of movies i'm just a fan of those movies where you take me back to a different time and show me a different world and especially one that connects to my personal preferences um but it's oh man just just God, I'm trying to think of just to wrap it up just some way. There's a, there's, if, I guess the best thing I see, it's like a, a photo, a beautiful photo, something you want to see kind of burned and burned up on, on a ground laying in a pile of ashes. And you can see a hint of what the photo used to be, and you still kind of remember for a minute how beautiful it was. That's, that's Cinema Paradiso, at its best, when it gets you. Um, wonderful movie. Uh, one of the greatest foreign films of all time. And, uh, I, it, easily top 20 material for me uh thank you for listening and uh give me your opinion in the comment section what's one of your favorite movies and uh have you seen cinema paradiso and um do you like the longer version better do you like the short i personally prefer the shorter version i think the pacing in the longer version spends way too much time in the third act um but uh good movie <laughs> uh good movie heavy movie i know it sounds cheesy i know it sounds like a chick flick it's not there's a lot here it's a very it's a it's it's just a, it's a it's one of those you know, like a Shawshank Redemption or, uh, you know, those kind of movies you watch. Like, oh, wow, this is a classic. Like, great. It's one of those kind of movies. Like, trust me. It, you're going to like it. If, if you don't like it, that's fine. But you just have to be the most cynical, jaded person in the world to not enjoy this movie.